Hey everybody, Seville here, and today we're going to be doing the blog room from Try Hack Me, where we hack into Billy Joel's WordPress blog. I have already completed this room, so this should be a pretty straightforward walkthrough, and hopefully I don't waste too much time explaining all the steps it took for me to complete this room in all of its entirety. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and hop right into it. I'm going to scroll down into task one description. I'm going to try my best not to spoil the answers here, as the answers are flip flip-flopped as the root question is actually question number one, and the first question we need to answer is uh, question number five. So uh, a little flip-flop there, so I'm going to try to just fit all this right there, and we can, and I'm going to go ahead and move forward with that. So Billy Joel made a blog on his home computer and has started working on it. It's going to be so awesome. Enumerate this box and find the two flags that are hiding on it. Billy has some weird things going on his laptop. Can you maneuver around and get what you need, or will you fall down the rabbit hole? And then it just kind of lets us know that we need to add a blog THM to our host file in order for it to work with AWS. So with that in mind, we can go ahead and start with our nmap scan. So I'm going to do my go-to, which is nmap sc for default scripts, sv for enumerate all versions. And then I'm going to output that to an nmap directory and call it openports.txt. And then we're just going to supply that IP address. I have already ran that, so we can just go ahead and cat that information out. And we see that there are only four ports open. We have SSH on port 22, HTTP on port 80, and then SMB with 139.445. And with that done, we can go ahead and add the blog THM to our host file. So I'm going to go ahead and get that going now. And I'm going to add an extra line just to kind of keep it neat and clean. So we'll supply that IP address and then, of course, blog.thm as it uh, stated. And we can go ahead and save that output and we should be good to go now. So we can just make sure and confirm and we see it is in fact good to go. So now we should be able to reach Billy Joel's WordPress blog. Shouldn't take too long to load. I did give it some good, oh, there it goes. So um, with that done, we see the first thing is a note from Billy Joel's mom from uh, by Karen Wheeler here, uh, a post done and it looks like it's just saying that uh, this is a good idea to help people that are getting started in the IT industry and that uh, he should have hidden this post once he got everything up and running or at least public. However, he did not, so we have the uh, glory of being able to read this. And we also have another post from Billy Joel himself saying that he's eager to get this uh, WordPress blog going and to write about all the different topics I guess he has in mind. Other than that, the, there's nothing else really too interesting except for the two comments that are uh, between Billy Joel and his mom. And we can move forward with something like a WP scan to get some information uh, about this WordPress blog. So we could just do WP scan and dash dash URL. And obviously we just need to supply that IP, uh, the IP address. And now we can also enumerate by using dash E and just a U for usernames because we wanted to enumerate the usernames that are on the blog that we could potentially brute force and get some, um, some valid credentials. So let's go ahead and run that. And it should spit out some information for us to uh, kind of get an idea of, one, the version of WordPress that is uh, being ran, and two, hopefully the two uh, usernames that we need to find. So, and as you can see, it actually went through pretty quick, and we were able to identify two users, Billy Joel himself and Karen Wheeler. And we also get the version number of WordPress, which is 5.0, and it looks like they have some potential... Um, uh, Metasploit modules that we can use to get maybe some more information or uh, some other stuff. So with that in mind, we can go ahead and create a users TXT file because we now have two identified users. So I'm going to go ahead and get that going. So users.txt and we have kwheel for Karen Wheeler and bjoel. So we'll go ahead and save that. And now with those two things or those two people, we can go ahead and attempt a brute force on the WordPress site so that we can get some valid credentials now, uh, or at least full valid credentials, because now we only have usernames and we still need the passwords. So we can just modify our WP scan um, command just a little bit. We'll just do the same thing here, so URL with the IP address, and this time we're gonna do a capital U so that we can supply a user's text file, which is gonna be our users.txt file, and then a um, dash P for a password file, which is gonna be rock you, so user share, see user share word list I was wondering why I uh, forgot that forward slash at the beginning and then rocky.txt and with that it's gonna pretty much run through that uh, the first step is gonna be pretty much the same where it just gives us the basic information of the WordPress site and then it should begin the uh, brute forcing of the two users 
K wheel and B Joel. And while that is going, I'm gonna go ahead and wait that wait for that to finish and we will come back right when it is. Okay, and we are back. So as you can see, we finally found a potentially successful set of credentials here for Karen Wheeler. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this uh, brute force attempt here and we can go ahead and try out these uh, credentials and see if they are valid. So what we can do is we can just go over to login and it should redirect us to the WordPress login and we can uh, supply the username which is kwheel and then the password which is cutiepy1 and it should log in for us. We'll give that just a second. And as you can see those credentials are in fact valid. So what we can do before moving too far forward is we can start a uh, creds.txt file. So we can just do creds.txt and kwheel and the password is cutiepie1. So we can go ahead and save that and we are good to go. So now that we have valid credentials, we can move forward with uh, searching for a potential exploit. Uh, the way I came across my exploit was I just uh, formulated a pretty simple word, uh, Google query for WordPress 5.0 uh, vulnerabilities abilities, and then I just looked through the CVEs and eventually came across the number 10 here which is CVE 2019-8942 and if you read through um, it also uh, leverages the exploit uh, in CVE 2019-8943 and it also has one Metasploit module so that's that was pretty interesting as well and um, from there there is the Rapid7 link which usually kind of gives you everything you need as far as what uh, the exact module you need to use and it is the um, w WordPress crop remote code execution or RCE um, exploit module. So we can go ahead and get Metasploit spun up and get to this module so that we can go ahead and configure it so we can run the exploit. So let's go ahead and do that. And if you wanted to, you could also go to somewhere like Attacker KB and maybe even search that CVE to get maybe some more details on it. So like 8943. As you can see, I've already done that as well. So uh, you can get some analysis or vulnerability details from the other links here. So um, you know, if you if if you've uh, already done the guided experience walkthrough for that box, then you pretty much know about this site. And it you know it was pretty nice to just go back and just kind of use it a little bit, even though I didn't really have to or need to. I just wanted to do it just because it was in you know it was in my mind at the time. So uh, with that done, Metasploit should be up, and it is, and we can use the exploit which was uh, multi HTTP and then WP crop RCE. So we can set that as our exploit and we'll clear it out and show the options. And we just need to f uh, fill in a few things. So we need to set the password, which is QDPI one. You need to set the target, which is gonna be the IP that is no longer in my clipboard. And we need to set the username, which is KWheel. And with that done, we can go ahead and run the exploit. And as you can see, it is already preparing the payload for us and we should uh, shortly drop into a Meterpreter shell and I will just skip to that exact moment. Now with our Meterpreter shell up and running, we can go ahead and drop a little further into the shell there, like so. And then we can list the contents of the current directory we are in and that is the WordPress directory. And we also see the config file is available to us. So we can actually cat the wp-config.php file out. And if we scroll just a little bit to the top, we find a password for a WordPress user, which was not a user that we uh, enumerated previously in the WP scan. And, you know, leads us to assume that this could potentially be the password for Billy Joel. And we can also try that by just logging out Karen Wheeler here and then typing in bjoel and supplying that password. And that should log us in. And that is a quick way to uh, potentially find a password. I attempted to see if I could restructure this um, exploit to use the Billy Joel credentials. Because as you can see, we are now signed in as Billy Joel. So we have both of the user's credentials, which we will also add to our creds.txt file. But I tried to manipulate this to see if it dropped me in a shell as Billy Joel. But if you see, we are currently at www.data. And if we go into the home directory, we see that Billy Joel is the only user and we have access to the user home folder. However, when we go to user.txt, 
we find that it is not in the place that we were looking for, which would be here, of course, and that we need to try harder. So I assumed maybe I need to um, go in as Billy, uh, Billy Joel, and maybe I have access to something different, but that is not the case, and I still drop in as uh, www data. But uh, before we move too far forward, I'm going to go ahead and edit that cres.txt file because we now have another set of credentials that uh, are in fact valid. And so let's go ahead and edit that. If we can type it right, of course. And now we can save that. And let's go ahead and make a files directory and move creds and user.txt over to the files directory to kind of clear everything up. So now that looks nice and neat. With that done, we can go back into our shell here, and we know that we need to find where user.txt is. And uh, with that in mind, we can do some enumeration through Linux Smart Enumeration or Linenum or um, LinPs or something like that. I personally am going to use Linux Smart Enumeration. So with that, uh, we could do it a few ways. We could, of course, use wgit. Um, and set up a Python HTTP server on our local machine, or we could just use the interpreter shell and just uh, upload it to the box here. So what I can do is exit and make sure I am in the temp directory. So we can just CD over to temp, make sure we are there, we are. And what I can do now is actually copy the Linux Smart Enumeration pr uh, program over to the blog directory. So I'll just go to uh, Linux Smart Enumeration and we will copy lsc.sh over to the blog directory now. And now we should be able to just upload lsc.sh. And we now have it on the machine here. So we can just change the permissions so that we can execute Linux Smart Enumeration. And now we should be able to run it. And it's going to ask if we uh, want to supply the user password to check pseudo privileges, but we don't have the password for www data. So we just hit enter. And now it's going to run through its automation. And we will eventually find that there is a uncommon set UID uh, binary file here in just a moment. And as you can see, it just flashed right through. And it is going to be in the user SBIN directory and it's going to be called checker. So we can go and check that out as well, because that's obviously going to be um, our way to root. So let's go ahead and should be able to just cancel this out. I wonder if it's already finished, actually. Oh, wait, we'll just wait for that to finish. Shouldn't take too long. Actually, we can just exit and just drop back into the shell and we should be good. So if we just go over to the user SBIN and look at the permissions, we see that we have the ability to read and execute. And if we were to try to read the program, obviously it's gonna be a bunch of wingdings and we don't really understand it. And we could try to do strings on checker. Strings checker. And you know, potentially find a user.txt maybe hidden in the uh, program file, but that is not the case. And if we actually run checker, we immediately get not an admin. So uh, this potentially is all, uh, our way to privilege isolation. So the next best thing is to get this file onto our local host so that we can do some more examination on this file itself. So I'm going to exit, go back into our interpreter shell, and make sure we are in the proper directory. And I can download the checker file so that it just goes right into the blog directory. So I'm gonna go back to that blog directory on my local machine. And now we have checker there in the blog directory. So what I can do is see what kind of file it is. And we see it's a L file. So what we can use is something like cutter or if you know you're super elite you could you know do it the uh the command line way but i am not that good so i'm going to go ahead and open that up in cutter and we just need to parse that file so that's going to be right here and we just got to open it and we give that just a second. And of course, in any situation, we want to look at the main function and we will decompile it. And we get this piece of code here. So basically, um, in, the, in the best way I can potentially explain this, because I feel like, um, you know, I spoke to two people actually 
uh, prior to the completion or, or post the completion of this box so that I could, you know, see if I could get a little better understanding of how I can explain it better to you all. And I was actually given a really cool example of what the code should actually look like. And I'll probably post it here um, right now on the video. But the best way I can explain it, and I hope this is enough, and if it's not, please let me know, is basically what this code does is it's going to search the environment variables. And if admin isn't an environment variable, we're going to get the output that we received earlier, which was not admin. However, and you know, we know for a fact, hopefully we know for a fact that uh, admin is not a um, default variable. So if we were to do something like um, echo path, we know that we're going to get the variable path and you know what it has. But if we do something like echo, um, if I can get it right, admin, nothing's going to come out because that's not a, a variable by by default. However, if we were to make that a variable, because we could just do something like export admin equals admin, now we are fulfilling what this checker program is looking for, and now it will set the UID to zero, which in our case on Linux is going to be the root user, and then run bin bash. And again, it's probably going to be a little easier to understand that if you're looking at the um, the picture that I'm going to post on, on this video that was given to me post the completion, because um, you know, just doing it from here, it's really hard for me to explain it uh, from what's in my head into proper words for everybody else to understand uh, without uh, not use it with, with me not using that example there. So basically, uh, again, it's getting our environment for www data and it's saying um, get the environment variable admin and compare it to, uh, in this case, what would be null. And if it um, if it's there, then set UID to zero else you know, not an admin. So now that we've exported admin and, and admin is now a variable and we can, uh, environment variable, we can check that if I can finally get it right. And we see that it does have, and it is a variable. So now when we run uh, checker, so I'll just make sure we're in that uh, directory there. So now when we run checker, it has been run and we can do who am I? And we are now root. So that is the uh, way for privilege escalation. And it just, you know, again, just went through that same kind of process. It uh, checked our environment variables. We finally had admin. So it met the demands for the else statement here. So now we are root and we can go into root directory, cap the root.txt file, and there is our root flag. And to um, also get the user.txt, um, I kind of had to use the, um, the room, the kind of asterisks. I kind of realized it, it had five, uh, five asterisks. So with that in mind, I kind of knew it was going to be the media uh, folder. However, if you go through, if you try to go to the USB file, um, USB directory as WW data, you will get a permission denied. However, um, if you're a root, obviously you have, you know, you don't, you don't need any permissions to go there. So if we go to US, uh, USB or I'm sorry, C CD media, and we list the contents there. We have USB, CD, USB, and then we cat user.txt. We also get the user flag as well. So now we have completely rooted this box and we are good to go. So um, in order to answer those other two questions was what was the version of the CMS that was being used? And we got that in our WP scan earlier, which was 5.0. And what CMS was, was being used by Billy? And that was, of course, WordPress because it is a WordPress blog. So that is all of our answers and we have rooted this box. So I hope that was a good enough explanation for that root uh, flag. And if not, again, you can, um, you can reach me on Discord at several or you can just uh, leave a comment and I'll do my best to uh, try to explain that a little further. And that is it, that is the video. I hope you all enjoyed it. You all have a wonderful day and I will catch you on the next video. Goodbye.